Today is an exciting day because we're exploring some entirely new sections of trail that have literally just opened. And believe me when I say, you're in for a treat. On an extremely hot and busy bank holiday weekend, I'm here at Cannock Chase to ride some of the new red features on Follow the Dog and to ride the brand new Blue Trail, which they named the Blue Trail. For the last year or two, I was aware that new trail sections were being built at Cannock Chase, but I hadn't realized exactly how large this project was. What these new additions may lack when it comes to exciting names, they more than make up for with exciting riding. Check this out. Over the last couple of years, I've noticed that trail repairs at Canic Chase have been airing on the more family-friendly side. Some of the more technical elements have been smoothed over and the trails are just easier to ride. So when I heard they were building an easier blue graded trail, I admit, I was slightly skeptical. Riding up to the start of the trails, I was honestly surprised at what I found. Where the old trail entrance used to be is now the start of the blue trail. The new entrance to the red follow the dog is just to the right. Taking a quick look at the map, this is a breakdown of the new trailhead and first sections. The new blue trail is here, winding its way towards the bottom of the map. The trail on the left is a brand new star to follow the dog, which they've named the qualifier. If you want to ride the dog, then this is the kind of difficulty you should expect. There's also this other trail on the far right. This line comes off the new blue and is the original dog trail. It still exists and is mostly untouched, but it has had a couple of rocky revamps. These new red trail features are a welcome addition and hopefully a sign that there may be more technical improvements of this nature coming to some of the other trails. Starting at the trailhead, I couldn't resist seeing what they created for the new red section, so I jumped right in. Follow the dogs qualifier section starts with this bumpy entrance. As I mentioned before, the features on this section are to stop inexperienced riders from taking on the dog and hurting themselves. This section is a short one, but it packs an absolute punch, starting with a drop and a couple of jumps. Yeah. These large berms are great feature to roll into, but with the trails being new and in this dry weather, they are really loose today. Considering that this is my first trail section of the day, I didn't want to get too carried away. Before moving on to check out the rest of the blue trail, I couldn't help but to head back up the trail to have a look at the section that I just missed out. Designed as a blue flow trail, I was amazed at what I found. Hi guys, so I'm actually quite impressed at this section. I hope you can see that, check it out. It's just switchbacks and switchbacks and switchbacks all the way to the bottom. Let's give it a try. This is a really well designed and built section. It snakes its way to the bottom of the hill using these big and well crafted berms. You can pick up a lot of speed by the time you get to the bottom, but trying to go fast, the dusty berms are a bit janky today, making it a bit of a sketchy run. Still, this didn't stop plenty of riders and families enjoying the new fun sections. Once you make it down, you can explore the rest of the blue trail. The first few sections that I've just ridden really do get you buzzing. They are a great introduction. This next section is a faster, flatter part of the trail, which basically is a bypass for the infamous Stegosaurus section. Because the red and blue trails run side by side at this point, you can always opt to ride the Stegosaurus and pick up the blue trail again just afterwards. Which is pretty much at this point here. Blue trails are mostly flow trails, and this one is no exception. Riding this, I was actually impressed at the number of rollers and berms that are all over the trail. These help you to maintain your speed through the sections and generally make the trail more interesting. These features are really important on a trail like this. 
Comparing Canic Chase to other mountain bike trail centres, it has surprisingly little elevation. Considering this lack of potential downhill, I'm impressed with what the trail builders managed to do with these sections. Don't get me wrong, there's still a fair bit of pedalling needed. But because this trail is designed as an introduction to mountain biking, there are no big hills. That is, until you get to this next feature. At this point on the trail, you have a blue and red option. A great place to test out your technical riding skills. The more difficult red line is direct, but very rocky. The blue trail skirts around the outside and is a lot flatter. I of course opted for the direct rocky red. Some of the steps are actually quite sizeable. I rarely get the chance to ride a technical uphill rock section, so I thought I'd give it a go. Can I make it all the way to the top? Place your bets now. Almost to the top, just the last couple of steps to go. Whoa, I almost lost it there. Yes. Made it in one. Yes. I almost had a little wobble on one of the last steps, which would have been devastating, but thank goodness for all the track stand practice. Once you've mastered this feature, you're most of the way around, but there are still plenty of fun features and flowing sections of trail to enjoy like these flowing berms and rollers. These new trails at Canic Chase are a combination of the funding between Staffordshire Council and Forestry England. The new trails are part of the Commonwealth Games Legacy Project. This legacy suggests that there's a need for a new blue trail at Canic Chase to act as an introduction to mountain biking. The idea is that riders will be able to get into mountain biking as a novice and progress to an expert using the trail systems here. Hence the need for a new blue trail that will complement the other reds. As well as creating the blue trail, part of this proposed plan is to add more technical features to the red trail sections too. Coronavirus will have definitely slowed the process down, but hopefully volunteer trail crews will be able to get back out soon and repair the trails, and with any luck we might see some new features added. Being the shortest, easiest graded and most accessible trail here, I can imagine that the new blue will be quite busy. My only issue with this trail is its close proximity to other paths. The trail actually joins some of the main paths around the most popular walks, which I guess is part of its family-friendly accessibility. So it's worth just being wary of other people as you ride and remember to be respectful of other users. Cheers guys. Thank you. But don't let this talk of pedestrians put you off. This trail is a fun warm-up before riding any of the other harder trails, or it's perfect for people learning to mountain bike and families. If you don't fancy riding the whole trail, you can always just session the top sections easily. So that's it for today, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.